What is up, young chemists? Mr. Rosen here. How's it going? I uh, hope you're doing well. Today, what we're going to do is look at the concept of significant figures. Uh, in this unit, we're focusing on taking measurements, and every measurement has two parts, a number and a unit. When we're doing, uh, when we're taking a measurement, the amount of certainty we have in our measurement is related to the tool that is used to measure it. And if you do calculations with measurements, you often have to round your answer. Significant figures is a concept that helps us with determining where we round a number. What do we include and what are we uh, not going to include in our measurement or in our answer to a calculation? So before we can figure out rounding, we need to focus on how to count significant figures. So there are a set of rules for significant figures, and we're going to focus on them first. So you can always pause the video and uh, read the text when we have some on the screen. Um, but here you can see it says uh, that uh, this is actually sort of summarizing what I already said, but a measurement can only be as precise as the instrument that produced it. So what did you use to make the measurement? Right? If you, if you measure the length of something that only has inches on it and no smaller increments, then you can you know, estimate, oh, maybe it's between uh, you know, two inches and three inches, but you're estimating that next place. Whereas if it had you know, every half inch marked on it, then you could know with certainty that it's more than two and a half inches, but less than three inches, right? So you'd have another place of certainty. Now, the more significant figures in your measurement, the, uh, the more uh, precise your measurement is. Um, uh, the more certainty you have in it. Okay, so here are rules. Now, if it's a non-zero digit, it's considered significant. You always want to include as many significant digits in your measurement as possible. The more significant uh, figures, the more certainty you have and the better. So in this example, 3319, all four of those digits are not zero, so that means they are all significant. So this number has four significant figures. Now, zeros are a little bit more tricky, and we have three uh, sort of categories of zeros. Leading zeros, captive zeros, and trailing zeros. We're going to talk about what each one is and show you an example. So leading zeros come at the beginning of the number. They're on the left side of the number. The only function of leading zeros is to tell you where the decimal point is. Kind of tells you how small the number is. Leading zeros are never significant. So if you're looking at this example, all of these zeros, which come on the left side of the number, these are all leading zeros. None of these are significant. It just holds the decimal point. So if I wanted to know how many significant figures this number has, not significant, not significant, not significant, not significant, and then we have some non-zero digits. So significant, significant, significant. This number has three significant figures. Captive zeros, sort of like the name implies, are uh, stuck between two significant digits, two non-zero digits. Uh, they are like held captive. So captive zeros are always counted as significant. So if we look at this number, the four is significant, then you have a zero, and then you have a four, a five, and a three. So all of the non-zero digits are significant. We know that. But we have this four here. This is an example of a captive zero. 
it's stuck between two significant digits. Captive zeros are always significant. So this number has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. So, so far so good. Leading zeros, never significant. Captive zeros, always significant. And then we have trailing zeros. And you might be, uh, you might be wondering, um, or I guess predicting, leading zeros are never significant. Captive zeros are always significant. Trailing zeros are sometimes significant. So if you're going to mess up a significant figure problem, it's probably going to be because of a trailing zero. Okay, they're the sort of the most complicated one, although it's really not that bad. Zeros that are trailing come at the end of the number that is on the right side. So they're sort of like the opposite of leading zeros. And trailing zeros are only significant if the number has a decimal point in it. And that means anywhere in the number. Okay, if there's a decimal point anywhere in the number, then trailing zeros are significant. So here, this is the number 1,000. These three zeros, they're all on the right side of the number. These are all trailing zeros. Trailing zeros are only significant if the number has a decimal point in it. Does this number have a decimal point in it? No, there is no decimal point. So these trailing zeros are not significant. That means that this number has just one significant figure. Okay, in contrast, if we look at this, this is also a thousand. But these are in and these are all trailing zeros. The difference is this number has a decimal point in it. If the number has a decimal point in it, then the trailing zeros are significant. So this number has one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. Okay, six significant figures. I'm going to try to make it a little brighter in here, sorry. I actually don't don't think that don't think that really helped. Sorry about that. Just trying to get the uh, the lighting in here a little better. Okay. So just real quick, you might be saying, Mr. Rosen, why does this matter? This is a thousand, this is a thousand, they're both a thousand, who cares? Well, the fact that this is a thousand and it has six significant figures means that when this measurement was made, we don't know what it is, but let's say, let's say that it was grams. Okay, let's say that it was grams. That would mean that in, in this instance, they would know with certainty that it's a thousand point zero zero grams and they're not really sure what comes next but they know that it's closer to zero than it is to one. Okay. In contrast, here, they don't know, actually all you know is that the measurement is closer to 1,000 than it is to 2,000 or zero, which is not very much certainty. So these could have been, you know, let's say measured using this with like a very precise digital scale, and this may be using just like a scale that only has increments of 1,000 on it. So the number of significant figures tells you something about the certainty of the measurement. And the more significant figures, the more certainty your measurement has, and for us, the better. Okay, you also have exact numbers. And exact numbers are not measurements. They're things that you count, right? When you're measuring something, like the length of it, there's some interpretation of you know, what the exact length is and you have to do some estimating, but exact numbers are things that are counted and you have no uncertainty, okay? So for example, if, if you're a, a human and you were born with uh, all of your fingers, you, you know, on average, most likely will have five fingers on your hand. If I wanted to know how many fingers I have, one, two, three, four, five, there's no uncertainty in that. Right? I just counted them. It's not like, oh, maybe I have four, maybe I have three, maybe I have six. No, I have five. 
Okay, it's, it's something you count. So exact numbers are things that are counted. There's no uncertainty. And so you treat them as if they have an infinite number of significant figures. Okay, if there's no uncertainty, you have an infinite number of significant figures. Another way to think about this is exact numbers are not going to limit your significant figures when you're doing a rounding. Okay, you don't round based on an exact number. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, let's try some practice problems. And this is just simply uh, practice with counting how many significant figures the number has. So I'm going to cover up the rules here, but maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can see okay. It's always a good idea to pause the video and try to do these on your own. Just jot down your answers maybe on a piece of paper and then um, check your answers to what I have. Okay, because I'm about to go over the answers, but all you're doing here is counting how many significant figures the number has. Okay, so if you want to try, pause the video. And now I'm going to solve them. So, this first number has a leading zero. Leading zeros are never significant. Then we have a two which is significant, and then we have a zero. This is what's called a trailing zero. It comes at the end of the number. Now, are trailing zeros significant? The answer is yes, if there's a decimal point in the number. Is there a decimal point? Yes. So this trailing zero is significant. So this number has two significant figures. Leading zero, never significant. Trailing zero, is significant if the number has a decimal point in it, and it does. We have a two. This is a captive zero, which is always significant, and then this is a trailing zero, which is significant if the number has a decimal point, which it does. So all of these are significant. This has four sig figs. Here we have a five, and then two trailing zeros. Trailing zeros are only significant if the number has a decimal point in it. This does not have a decimal point in it, so these zeros are not significant. So this number only has one significant figure. Next we have 501. This is a captive zero. Captive zeros are always significant. So all three are significant, and this has three significant figures. Next we have uh, 50,000. Camera's trying to focus. So we have 50,000. Now this has four trailing zeros. These are all trailing zeros. Trailing zeros are only significant if the number has a decimal point in it. Does it have a decimal point? Yes, right there. So all of the trailing zeros are significant. That means we have one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Next we have a six, a captive zero, which is always significant, and then this is another captive zero. So both of these zeros are significant. That means that all of these numbers are significant. So one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures in that measurement. Here we have three leading zeros. Leading zeros are never significant. Okay, that doesn't matter if there's a decimal point or not. Leading zeros are never significant. So these are not significant. We just have one sig fig. Leading zero, not significant. Here is a captive zero, which is significant. And then these are trailing zeros. Trailing zeros are significant if the number has a decimal point in it. And look at that. We do have a decimal point. So this has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. The only figure that's not significant is the leading zero. This is a little different because it's in scientific notation. And if it's in scientific notation, all you have to do is consider this first part. Okay, you don't need to consider this second part. So if we're just looking at this, three and four are significant, zero is trailing, and there's a decimal point, so it is significant. So this has three significant figures. Sometimes you have to write a number in scientific notation in order to represent it with the correct number of sig figs, or sometimes people will put a little bar 
over the last significant place. In this number, the only uh, one that's not significant is this trailing zero. There's no decimal point in this number, so the trailing zero is not significant. So this has three significant figures. Here we have a leading zero, not significant. This is a captive zero, which is significant. And here's a trailing zero, which in this case is significant because we have a decimal point. So again, the only thing that's not significant here is the leading zero. So one, two, three, four, five significant figures for number 11. Final problem uh, on the counting, we have zero is, uh, this is captive. This is a zero that's captive, so those are both significant, and this is a trailing zero. Our number has no decimal point, so that trailing zero is not significant. So this number has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. So pause to see how you did. Did you get them all right? Did you get them all wrong? Which ones did you get wrong? And chances are, if you got one of them wrong, then it was because of a certain thing, like you got the uh, leading zeros rule mixed up, um, in which case you probably got all of those ones uh, wrong. But uh, make sure you can count significant figures because you have to be able to count them before we can round our answers to correct sig figs, which is what you're going to be doing all school year. You're going to be rounding your answers to correct significant figures. Okay, so now is the time that we practice that. There is a different set of rules for rounding to correct sig figs based on if you're rounding um, a multiplication and division or if it is a, a multiply and divide. Oh, sorry, a multiplication, division, or an add and subtract. So we have two different rule sets. Sorry if I, uh, that was unclear. If you're multiplying or dividing, your answer cannot have more significant figures than the measurement with the least amount of significant figures in that calculation. So you round your answer to the number of sig figs that the measurement with the least amount of sig figs has. Okay, now in contrast, it's a little bit different if you're adding or subtracting. When you're adding or subtracting, your answer can only have as many digits after the decimal point as the measurement with the least amount of numbers after the decimal point. Okay, so it's all about after uh, decimal places when you're adding or subtracting, whereas multiplying and dividing, it's total number of sig figs. So here's what, uh, here's what I'm going to do for each of these, and this is what you're supposed to do. If you're working on um, you know, a packet in my class, you'll notice that it looks just like this, and I've just changed numbers that are, I've changed signs a little bit. But what you should do for each of these is just do the calculation using a calculator and write down your answer. Okay, So you're going to do the calculation for each of them, and then write down your answer. And I just want you to write down what the calculator spits out. You then need to take that answer and round it to correct significant figures. So for example, we have 405 and I'm going to subtract Seven fifty kilograms. I don't. Uh, I don't know if I change the number. I don't really want this to be negative, but yeah, actually, I just don't even like this example. Sorry. I think I'm going to. I mean, I would have a negative answer, but negative kilograms is. I don't know. It's just. Uh, let's let's turn this into. Uh, four, uh, 14, so 1, 4, 0, 5. Sorry, I just want to, I'm just, uh, I changed some numbers around and did it real quick. I'm going to just change this for the sake of my example so that we don't end up with a negative number. It doesn't really matter, but, um, you know, with kilograms, I want to make uh, more sense. So 14.05 minus... 750.25 and what my calculator spits out is 
5.5, and this would be kilograms. That's what my calculator spits out. Okay, or for the next one, right here, number two, if I plug this in, 3.252 times uh, 0.125 times 0 0.012, the calculator gives you 0 0.004878. And now, if you did millimeters times millimeters, that'd be millimeters squared times millimeters. This would be cubic millimeters. Don't worry too much about the units at this point, but I'm just writing down what the calculator spits out. So, um, you should go through and do uh, calculate all of them, just writing down what the calculator spits out, and then you're going to round them to correct significant figures. And I know I changed the first one, and uh, and I'll see when I'm going through them if there are any any other ones that uh, I changed the numbers on that I think uh, I think is not very uh, not great, but whatever um, it's it's fine just for the sake of rounding to sig figs we don't need to worry about too much but in this first problem and of course at any point you can pause the video and, and try to uh, try to work the problems on your own I'll actually just uh, I'll slide this up so that you can see um, see most of the problems and uh, you can pause the video and, and try to do these This first problem was addition or subtraction. Our answer cannot have more numbers after the decimal point than the measurement with the least amount of numbers after the decimal point. So this measurement has no numbers after the decimal point. That means our answer can have no numbers after the decimal point. So we're going to round to 6 50, and are you going to say, oh, 654? Well, if you look at this number, is this number closer to 654 or is it closer to 655? All right, this number is, is more than 5, so that means this rounds up to 655. All right, so that is rounding it to the correct number of significant figures. This problem over here is multiplying. Okay, when you do multiplication or division, your answer cannot have more significant figures than the measurement with the least amount of significant figures. So this number has one, two, three, four significant figures. This number has three significant figures. Remember, because leading zeros are not significant. And this number has two significant figures. So this has 4, this has 3, this has 2. Our answer cannot have more significant figures than the measurement with the least amount of significant figures. So this measurement only has two sig figs. That means our answer can only have two significant figures. Now, as written, these leading zeros are not significant. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So this has four sig figs. So we have to round this to two significant figures. 0 0.00, 0 right, those are not significant. 4, that's one sig fig, and then the next one. Is this closer to 0 0.0048 or 0 0.0049? Right? This is closer to 0 0.0049. And that is our unit, and this number has two significant figures. So if you want to pause the video and try the other problems, they're actually... Um, there are a total of 10 of them here that I'm going to be going through. If you want to solve these problems, again, just plug them into your calculator and write down what your calculator says. Then figure out how would you round that to correct sig figs. Okay, and I'm about to uh, do exactly that. I'm going to write down what the calculator says for each one, and then I'm going to round it to correct sig figs. Okay, so. Here we go. Number three, we have 0.878 plus 0.23, and my calculator gives me 1.0, oh, sorry, 1.108. I'm going to try to keep this so you can see it, but uh, 
1.108 and you're adding this so this is just pounds okay now that's what the calculator says this number has one two three digits after the decimal point and this number has two digits after the decimal point if you're adding or subtracting your answer can only have as many numbers after the decimal point as the measurement with the least amount of numbers after the decimal point. Because this has two numbers after the decimal point, our answer can only have two numbers after the decimal point. So this is going to get rounded to 1.1, and then we're going to have one more place, and you have to think, is this closer to 1.10, or is it closer to 1.11? And the answer is 1.11. It's closer to that. So that's where we rounded. This is pounds. Right, two numbers after the decimal point. Next one, we have uh, 734.504 plus 498.5. 0.9916. The calculator gives me 1233.5316. This is grams. Now, where do we round that number? Well, we're adding and subtracting, so it's all about numbers after the decimal point. This has three numbers after the decimal point. This has one, two, three, four numbers after the decimal point. So we're going to go three places after the decimal point. So our answer is going to be one, two, three, three point five, three, and then we're going to have one more place, and we need to think, is this closer to 0.532, or is it closer to 0.531? It's closer to 0.532. So that's where we round. Okay, I'm going to uh, write out the next ones. 54 divided by 10.1. Now, if you see, this is what the calculator gives you, right? So uh, the calculator, this is just in the way, sorry. The calculator gives you 5.3465, that probably repeats, but anyhow, uh, that's what it gives you. And in terms of units, if you take grams divided by milliliters, then your unit would be grams divided by milliliters, grams per milliliter. That could be like a density unit. Anyhow, you could probably say, you know, we don't know the density out to a billionth place, right? We, we need to probably round somewhere here. But where do we round? Do we, do we get rid of these ones? Do we get rid of all of this? Do we get rid of all the decimals? Where do we round? Where we round is based on the measurements, okay? And multiplying and dividing is all about how many sig figs are in the measurement. So this number has two significant figures. This number has three significant figures. Our measurement can, or sorry, our answer can only have as many significant figures as the measurement with the least amount of sig figs. So we have two sig figs in this. That means that this number right here, which currently has like 10 sig figs, it can only have two sig figs. So we're going to say five, that's one sig fig, point, and then you have to think, this next one, is this closer to 5.3 or is it closer to 5.4? Well, this number is less than 5, so that means that it's closer to 5.3. And the rest of it gets rounded off. 5.3 grams per milliliter. So we're rounded. Now the next one might be a little bit scary because it has a scientific notation. But 10 to the 6 is a million. So if you take this times, if you take three times a million, you get three million. So this is three million six hundred and ten thousand joules. Now, what is a joule? A joule is a unit of energy. 
we'll, we'll use that later in the year. But that's our number of joules. Okay, so uh, on, my, on my calculator, 36100000 divided by 0 0.0094, that's seconds. And my calculator gives me this, you know, this big number. And the number is 384042553.2. And if we took joules divided by seconds, we'd have joules per second. So it's maybe a rate of uh, energy being produced or something like that or consumed. Um, okay. Just get the zoom right here. So that's our answer. Now you can see this number has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten significant figures. It probably uh, needs to be rounded. Well, if we're multiplying or dividing, our answer can only have as many sig figs as the measurement with the least amount of sig figs. This has three sig figs, and this has just two sig figs because leading zeros are never significant. So that means our answer can only have two significant figures. So it's going to be three. And then you have to decide, is this 3, uh, 8, 4, blah, 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 is this closer to 3, 8, 0, 0, 0, or is it closer to 3, 9, 0, 0, 0? This is less than 5, so it's closer to 3, 8. And then the rest of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places, become zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So these are commas. and there's no decimal point. So this is uh, joules per second. So this number only has two significant figures because they're trailing zeros with no decimal point, so they're not significant. Okay? Um, okay, we're going to do the last four. Again, I want you to make sure that you've done these um, and you can check your uh, check your work afterwards. Give them an honest effort. Okay, so number seven. Point zero five one zero minus point one seven. It's going to give us a negative number. Whatever. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, 0 0.119, this is a negative number, negative that many meters, whatever, it's fine, we're just practicing rounding. Um, and our answer can only have, this is subtraction, so this has two numbers after the decimal point, so our answer can only have two numbers after the decimal point, so this gets rounded to point one. Two meters. Obviously, I know it's just sort of strange, but the units and sign don't really matter. We're just rounding, practicing rounding to sig figs, and I, I put in some numbers real quick and didn't think about them too much. Um, number eight, eight four nine plus two point one plus three hundred. The calculator gives us 115.1, one, uh, 1. 1, and this is centimeters. That's what the calculator gives you. Now, again, if we're adding, we can't have more numbers after the decimal point than the measurement with the least amount of numbers after the decimal point. This has one number after the decimal point. This has two numbers after the decimal point. This has no numbers after the decimal point. So that means our answer can have no numbers after the decimal point. So this becomes 1, 1, five, one, and that's it. No numbers after the decimal point. Okay. Next one on here, we have 654 divided by 710. And look at that calculator number, right? The calculator gives you 0 0.921126760 and that would be uh, meters per
per second, again, like a, maybe a rate of speed. That has a huge amount of sig figs. We need to round them somewhere. Well, our answer can only have as many sig figs as the measurement with the least amount of sig figs. This has three significant figures. This only has two significant figures because that's a trailing zero with no decimal point. So our answer can only have two significant figures. So this is going to come into, it's a leading zero, so it's not significant. That's our first significant figure. And then you have to think, is this closer to 0.92 or closer to 0.93? Well, this is less than five, so it's closer to 0.92. And this is meters per second. That's our rounding. Okay, final one here. We're going to take um, 648.01010, okay, that number plus 88.098. Calculator gives us 736.1081, that's kilograms. Because we added, our answer can only have as many numbers after the decimal point as the measurement with the least amount of numbers after the decimal point. This has one, two, three, four, five, and this has three. So our answer can only have three numbers after the decimal point. So it's going to be 736.10. This is closer to 108 than 109, so it stays 108. That's three numbers after the decimal point. That's our unit of kilograms. We always need a number and a unit. So today we have been focusing on significant figures. We have practiced counting to the correct number of significant figures. We have memorized our rules for counting significant figures. And then finally, we did calculations and we practiced rounding to correct sig figs whether we were adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. Hopefully this has been helpful. Study the rules, memorize them, work, work, work. Good job. This is Mr. Rosen, out.